Hello, nerds! Thank you for watching Generally Nerdy. This is your Week in Nerddom Movies Edition for the week of March 26th, 2019. This week in movies, we're talking Deadpool 2 reshoots, we're talking Doctor Doom movie. Yeah, that's right, Doctor Freaking Doom. Infinity War, other stuff from WonderCon. Let's hit up that intro real quick so we can get to this news. Quiet on the set, rolling. Hi, I am Bitsy Tellick. Hey, I'm Hale Appleman. I'm Walter Kane. I'm Rene Aubergenois. Odo on Deep Space Nine. Michael Dorn, Lieutenant Commander of War, Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, come and see me and hear me and talk to me and listen to me and talk about myself. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, often considered generally nerdy, and you are listening to what is often considered generally nerdy. On generally nerdy. You're listening to Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Coming out the gate, we're talking about Deadpool 2. Everybody knows at this point that they went and did six days of reshoots after they did the test screenings in Hollywood, and that's not a bad thing. I, reshoots are just, they really loved this kind of stuff, so let's give them more of this stuff. And part of that, part of those reshoots, and, and, and just for frame of reference, they shot nine days of reshoots for the original Deadpool movie, so uh, that could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. It's, it's kind of an indifferent thing. But the thing that we're talking about is the reshoots, they, they announced that there's going to be a secret cameo in these reshoots. So uh, this is just a real quick thing. I just wanted to pass this off to you guys. Who possibly could be the secret cameo? Because we have so many other cameos from that new trailer, so... Uh, yeah, I just, it's gonna be, and, and, and is the secret cameo going to be an, a mutant cameo? Is it going to be a character cameo or is it going to be like the creator cameo? Rob Liefeld, is it going to be him? It, what is, what's the cameo going to be? I have no idea and really with stuff like this, I am horrible at guessing. So passing this one off to the nerd dumb guys, let me know what you think the cameo is going to be. Next up, we're talking about the Doctor Doom movie. Noah Hawley, who is the showrunner on Legion for FX and also for Fargo on Stars, I believe, um, is not, is not just saying, "Hey, I want to do a Doctor movie, a Doctor Doom movie." Is doing a Doctor Doom movie. That's right. Is making it happen, and he says that he doesn't need the Fantastic Four to do it. Okay, let's read the quote real quick, just so that we have a little more frame of reference. This comes from The Observer. They talked to him recently, and it says, What's interesting to me about Doom's character is, he's king of an Eastern European country. And is there a version of this that is more political thriller that mixes genre? So this is getting back into, this is, uh, there's more quote, so we'll come back to it, but... This is kind of adding to that conversation we started last week with the superhero genre is is getting is getting much bigger. It's it's too big for just the blockbuster movie. They're they're switching it up and giving us different kinds of superhero stuff without being a superhero movie. So again, and then back to the quote. I'm sorry. It's something that Captain America the Winter Soldier did really well, which was kind of make a Cold War thriller movie out of a superhero movie. This is different than that, but it does have the idea of, and I don't want to say too much about it, but it's a mixture of genres. The mandate is not to relaunch the Fantastic Four franchise as much as it is to take this fascinating and underserved character and, re and really build a movie about him where we ask the question, is he a hero? Is he a villain? What does he really want? And with Doctor Doom, that's the conversation you have to have, right? Because he really thinks he's doing the world a favor. He thinks he's going to be the best ruler for the world, and that's why he wants to take over. He thinks he's going to be our new Jesus. I probably wouldn't put it in those terms, but still, like, that's, that's Doctor Doom in a nutshell, right? He thinks that he's the best and that everyone else is a bad guy. So I, I feel like Noah Hawley's got that mentality that, that you need to do a Doctor Doom movie, especially if you're gonna be so ballsy as to leave the Fantastic Four out of it. So 
yeah, very, very interesting. I, we're going to be keeping our ears open for more news about this. Next up is Infinity War, and we might have had a quasi-leak new info that was unexpected and could have bigger implications, which we love to talk about over here. So, uh, Silver Surfer might be making a cameo or playing some sort of role in the new Infinity War movie. Um, on Metacritic, for some reason, a cast list has appeared. Why it, wouldn't be on, why it wouldn't be on IMDb first, or even Wikipedia first, I don't know, but Metacritic is where it's at, so there you go. Uh, they have a list for the Silver Surfer, and who is playing him? Kurt Clendon, Clendonine? I don't know how to say that last name. Um, isn't Silver Surfer property of Fox? Yes, I realize Fox is being in the process of being bought out by... Disney. So yeah, it, it, eventually it will be property of Disney, but right now that's not a thing. So I don't know. And, and like just weird, weird. Also included in the cast list is Brie Larson for Captain Marvel, uh, Samuel L. Jackson's Nick Fury, Michael Rourke, Rourke the Rookers, Yondu. Whoa, that was a, a lot of O's. Uh, and a couple others that are like, the rest of them kind of were like, all right, I can see how they'd put them in there, but... And uh, one of them is uh, uh, Colby Smolder's character from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., so they're actually going to be tying in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. to the MCU, so that's really cool, but I just... If they're gonna put in a Fox Marvel-owned character, why go with the Silver Surfer? I mean, maybe once we watch the movie, we'll know, but why... Why go with the Silver Surfer and not like a, an absolute fan favorite like Wolverine or I don't know one of the other X-Men that just seems like a very strange choice but I don't know I'm not working over at Disney so I, I got nothing uh, the movie is still set out to come out April 7th so we are not that far away it's east uh, the 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 weekend after Easter so there you go and then, our last bit of movie news this week, Movies was a small video because everyone just wants to talk about Infinity War and really mundane things about Infinity War. Not, not, I mean, the cameo thing is really interesting, but there's a lot of stuff out there like, I, we know Hawkeye's gonna be in it, like, why, I don't know. The, Hawkeye's apparently got a bigger fan base than I thought because every other Infinity War story is something to do with Hawkeye and people putting him in posters or making the trailer include him or something silly like that so there you go but the last bit of news comes from wondercon wondercon is going on this weekend and actually is done as i'm filming this but you know things anyway is coming from wondercon and it's kind of sort of technically a tv announcement but tv was so full and movies was not we're gonna we're putting it in movies um WonderCon, uh, Legion M, for those of you that don't know, and uh, apparently there's a lot of people who don't know, because I didn't know, and, and I'm like a news source, kind of, right? So anyway, uh, Legion M is a new company, they had a panel at WonderCon, it's a new company, they announced uh, three or four new TV shows that they're going to be putting out, and... Uh, they're they're looking to start funding for movies, and that's why we're talking about in movies. So one, uh, Legion M is a fan-owned company. Like I'll put a link to their to their website in the description. You can jump on the the bar for entry is a little high for you know average fans like me. A hundred bucks, you buy a portion of this company. So if they have a million fans and they only get in for a hundred bucks and they've got a hundred million dollars to do with to make some fan service content. Um, the stuff that they've announced for TV looks really interesting. Uh, looks a little like stuff that you would see on the sci-fi channel though. So I say that with a little trepidation, but I it's yeah. Very interesting. So there's a blurb I got from comicbook.com, I believe. Uh, Legion M's executives 
also discussed, so after they talked about their uh, TV stuff, they also discussed how the company is giving fans first ever chance to invest in films and television and truly be a part of Hollywood and change the way entertainment is made. So you buy in, you have something of a say for what content is put out. Uh, founded in 2016, Legion N is the first of its kind company conceived and created to be owned by fans. Legion M has raised more than $3 million in equity crowdfunding. The global Legion M community has grown to more than 20,000 members, including more than 700 or 7,000 fan owners. So uh, the hundred bucks I, it, from that description sounds like you're not going to get to own a portion of the company for a hundred bucks. There are different tiers. All of it's laid out on the website. There are different tiers. And I, I guess I didn't read it as close as I thought I did, but um, very interesting. Legion M is going to be putting out content. So that's where we're dropping that one. And that's the end of movies this week, guys. But before we get to all of the end bits, let's talk about next month. Next month is April. And in April, which is only a few days away, uh, April 1st, a.k.a. Easter, a.k.a. Uh, April Fool's Day, which is a very interesting combination, I'm not going to lie. Uh, so April 1st is the day that is the final day that you'll be seeing these videos if you're not a patron. We'll get to the Patreon in a minute. Uh, and that is the beginning of April. So we are just a few weeks away from Dink Denver and Starfest Denver. So I'm going to be doing some how-to Comic-Con videos for both cons. And we're also doing an episode of Adventures in Photography for both for both cons. Dink Denver is, again, is more uh, artist-driven. is underground comic books. There's tattoo artists there. So on the list for Dink Denver is... We're going to be doing uh, architecture photography because the building that the convention is held in is very beautiful. We're going to be doing some street photography uh, on the floor and just around the building in general. Also going to be doing the, the artists at their booths and on panels and so on and so forth. Very possibly we'll see some tattoo, uh, ta active tattoo pictures taken as well, though that's not technically on my list because I'm not 100% certain they're going to be actively tattooing at the convention. I went the first year and they did not do that, but it was in a different building then, so maybe they've figured out how to work around health codes or whatever, but that's Dink Denver. The other convention is Starfest Denver, which is a little more like Comic-Con. So there's cosplay that we're going to be taking pictures of. There's uh, definitely going to be more street photography style stuff in, on the floor in the uh, convention center. Also, they have very unique vendors, so I'm going to be taking some pictures of them. And they have an art show, so sculptures and things, I'll be trying to get pictures of those as well. So that's the checklist for Starfest. If you guys want to see any other photos, uh, any kind of pictures from either of those two conventions, you can definitely leave that in the description down below. Or you can jump over to the website, generallynerdy.net, and you can talk to me about it over there. While you're over there, you can let me know what I missed in any of these videos. You can, you can l let me know what you feel like we need to talk about next week, and I'll take that into consideration. Or you can also do that in the comments down below. Other things you can do over on the website are find the stores and the social media links. In the stores, there's nerdy shirts, there's all kinds of wonderful stuff. Uh, check out generallynerdy.net for all of that. If you want to support the channel a little more directly, I am also on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Generally Nerdy is the place you can go support me through Patreon. It's a little more direct. You do get stuff in return for uh, jumping on Patreon, and all of that is listed out on the website. Patreon.com slash Generally Nerdy. But... If you are new to this channel, definitely click that subscribe button. If you like this episode, click that like button. If you are falling behind on your nerd news and you want to catch up, click or tap that box right there to the left of my face to do that. But before you go, always, always remember, guys, that if it is generally nerdy, it's probably here.